Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Amen. Open your Bibles in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Amen? Say amen. Well, you there. Amen? Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen? And his mercy endure forever. Second Corinthians chapter 3, we're going to start in verse 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are a piece of written in our hearts. You know, a piece of a, it's a letter. Amen. Amen. Not in read by all men. Hallelujah. Verse 3, clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tables of stone, but on tables of flesh, that is, of the heart. Amen? Amen. That's the word of God. Hallelujah. Every believer must be a living epistle of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Every believer. One was read and known by all. Amen. Yes. When people see us are to be see Jesus in us. We represent him. Amen. We have to be full of the word of God. Amen. The word of God is supposed to be established in our heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Established. Amen. Because God already established his word in heaven. We have to establish the word of God here in this earth. Each individual, each believer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then we do that. Become true disciple of Jesus because the disciple of Jesus follow him and his teaching. Amen. Amen. And we want to see it today. Hallelujah. That's, we have to become a biblical Christian. Amen. No Christian of the imagination. Okay. But biblical Christian, but the word of God said. Amen? To believe all the word of God, the entirety of the word of God established. Okay? And we have to pattern a life according to the word of God. Amen. Amen? Not the word to part to pattern and the way we want it. Okay? But we pattern ourselves with the word of God. Amen. Amen? Alive. I mean, we allow the Holy Spirit to shape us according to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. That's a, a biblical Christian. Yes. Okay. We receive the Word of God, keep the Word of God, live the Word of God. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Biblical Christian. Now of the imagination. Amen. Let's go to. John chapter 14, say amen, were you there? John chapter 14, okay. amen, we're going to start in verse 1, we want to read some verse here and John 14, starting in verse 1, you should study the whole chapter and, and your own time of, of meditation and study of the Word of God. Get the whole chapter, chapter 14 and 15, 16, all together. You know. And we see, you know, most of the of the verse in those chapters in red. I mean, 
Jesus was speaking directly those words. Amen? Come directly from the mouth of Jesus when he was here in this earth, those words. And read. Study that. Okay? Make us have it to study those chapters. Are you John 14? Yes. Verse 1. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Amen? Amen. How we believe in God? We believe in God when we trust in Jesus. Amen? That's what we believe in God. And another way to believe in God is believing His Word, keeping His Word, trusting His Word, living by His Word. Amen? Amen? That's what Jesus is saying here. Believe in God. Also believe in me. Amen? How we know Jesus? We, we believers in this time, the willing walk with Jesus, when Jesus was here in this earth. How, how we believe in him? Through his word. Amen. And that's the way we know him, through his word, because this word tells us who Jesus is. Amen? That's, you cannot believe in Jesus and you not receive his word. Okay. It's not only believe in Jesus when we came into salvation to the kingdom. You believe it? that time when you heard about Jesus, that Jesus is the savior of the whole world, that he paid for your sin. You believe that word, right? Amen. And you say, yes, Jesus, come into my heart. I know you're the son of God. Save me. Then you get saved, right? Because you believe in God. And then, we don't, and I finish there. Then you have to continue knowing about Him, to know Him, really. To know Him. And then, how do you know Him now? By His Word. Amen. You start loving Him. Because His Word, you, you know Him through His Word. Because really, when we, we get saved, we don't know Him, really. We believe that he's the Savior. But we don't know him because we don't have no fellowship with him, no intimacy with him. Right? Remember, our intimacy with Jesus is not about imagination. Amen. It's about the truth that we know about him, the yes. things world. You see? Like, 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 like people get married, right? Some people get married, they know in a week they get married. They don't know each other. They really don't know. You don't know a person in a week. Not even anymore. Stay the <laughs> lifetime, right? And the same thing, the marriage, then we know each other. And we, then we know each other. We marry, the days pass by. The same with Jesus. You have to have fellowship with him, communion with him, through his war, remember? You know, I, 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 have, I have met many believers that live about imagination. They don't touch the world for anything. They just imagine, so ah, I'm in a cloud with Jesus. I'm the favor of Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus loves me. Yeah, Jesus loves you. That's true. Jesus loves you. But I don't know truly you love him. And we're going to see it. Because you know him is by his word. Amen. We have to spend time in the Word of God. Like, a, like wife and husband spend time, they know each other. Time. <laughs> Together, all the time. Hallelujah. Yeah. They believe in God. Believe also in me, say Jesus. Yeah. Uh, believe in Christ is believe in His word and be a doer of the word. Amen. Because you believe, obey. Yes. Paul said, we, because we believe, we speak. You see? And they are not spoke. They did the word. <laughs> they, that means they live it. Amen. 
We are fisting. We end John 14, we are fisting. Amen? Look at that. You look at your Bible, right? Yes. If you love me, that Jesus is talking, if you love me, keep my commandments. What he's talking about? His word. Amen. He's saying. Okay. Hallelujah. Keep it. That's the way a believer loves Jesus, keeping his word. Amen. He's saying. You know, obedience sometimes, sometimes, and not pleasant for you. But you do it because it's the right thing to do. That's right. Right? And not about, oh, you feel good about this. No, you do it because it's the right thing. Yes. And that's why Jesus said, keep my word. And not about, I'm not telling you to how, how you feel about it. I'm not telling you, keep it when you feel good. I just say, if you love me, Keep my commandments or keep my word. We're going to read this. We're going to see this. Keep multiple times here. That's a biblical Christian. The one who keep Jesus' word, Jesus' commandment, Jesus' sayings. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let me repeat verse 15. If you love me, Keep my commandments. Amen? Amen. Keep. Again, keep is to believe it and do it. Amen? Yes. Amen? And then like the guy that used to say, keep it, keep it, keep it. Then they say, keep it what? Say that. What, 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 what? And not only, when he said, keep it, not just storage inside of you. Do something with it. <laughs> yeah. Like, they keep it, is to believe it and do it. Amen? Amen. And we're going to see here, like I said before, Jesus is going to continue using the word keep here. He, he repeated. That's important. He wants the believer to get it. Yes. That's why he repeated this word multiple times. Amen. You love Jesus. Amen. Keep his commandments. Keep Amen. his word. Amen. Because he loves you. Amen. He loves you. He gave his life for you. He went to the cross for you. Verse 21, we're still in John 14. He, he who has my commandments and keeps them, you see that? Who has it and keep them. The one who receives it right? and brings it yeah. and believes it. Say, yeah! I believe it. I receive that. Do it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. You ask my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me. And Jesus said that. If you love me, will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Amen. We see it here, Jesus speaking. 
Say, you love me, kiss my commitment. The one who loves me is the one who kiss my commitment and do it. The one who obey that. Amen? That's when he said, you will be beloved by my father and me. He's not saying the father loves you anyway, but he said, you are spreading his love. One thing somebody tell me, I love you, but I'm not spreading his love because, you know. But when, when he's saying, you are spreading the love of God in your life, if you keep his commitment, you do it. Just when we see, you know, in church, you know, we say, we, when we listen to the, the, the music, we say, oh, Lord, I want to spread his love. So we, we want to feel the emotion, right? But to spread his the love of God, you have to keep his commitment and do it. Sometimes we feel, you know, that emotion, but not all the time it's going to be there. But you can experience His love every day if you keep His commitment and do it every day. Experience His love. You know, and you, and you are sure that God loves you. There's never going to be a question in your and you heart if God loves you or not. You know why? Because you keep His commitment. God is not a liar. Amen. We love you. But, but to spread any love, you have to be obedient. He love is not going to change for you whatever you do. It's not, not changing. But to experience it, you have to keep going. You are spreading his love because he loves you. Some people, they've been Christian for many years, and then I surely God loved them. You know why? Because they're not keeping his commitments. God loved them, and God's telling them, I love you. But because they are disobedient, they don't believe in God, they don't, they don't feel like, and they don't believe that God loves them. Believe God's word. He loves you. Amen? This, look at the, at the end of this verse. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Manifest. That I means he allow himself to come to you in a many ways. He can show himself in you and through you. Okay. It's not like we, we, we're going to see the appearance of Jesus, you know, you just know, but his character, his joy, everything is that manifesting in your life. Everything that Jesus is will manifest in your life. That's what I'm talking about. Amen? Amen. Biblical Christian keeps Jesus' word and is not casual with it. Come on. Some people are casual with the word of God. You're like, okay, I know, I know, I know, I know. Did you study the word of God? Man, no, I don't have time for that. You don't love it. Oh, God understand. No, I said, keep my word. And do it. You love me. Did you love me? You know, I. Most Christians, they always claim the promise of God, but the promise of the blessing, yeah, the material thing, whatever they get, the Bible has promised to them is material, the blessing, they, 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 they receive, they embrace those thing, but the other prayer promises, is here, the New Testament is talking about that is nature, is in you. They don't embrace that. That, 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 that like a, not there. Oh no no no. It's scarlet. No 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 no. But every everything else, the blessing, everything else, they embrace it. They want and they claim it. And God and the Lord is the one who to receive all His word, embrace Amen. all of them, all His promises, all of them. That's the miracle Christian. They embrace everything that's of God. Come on. No, you have one thing. You know, thing, and that I don't want that. 
Biblical Christian embrace everything, receive everything that's of God. Amen? Amen. Everything. Receive it all of God. Amen. Don't be casual with the word of God. Let's continue reading. Verse 23 and 24 together. I want to read those two verses together. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, anyone, anyone here loves Jesus, Come on. he will keep my word. You hear that? And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. I mean, a dwelling place. And we have the dwelling place of God. Yes. Home is a dwelling place. Yes. That means God dwelling in us. We are the house of God. Amen. Each individual. Yes. Each individual is the temple of God, the dwelling place of God. The temple of God. The temple of God's holy the temple we are. Hmm? Yes. Hallelujah. You know what many charlatans saying around? Oh, those words that Jesus spoke, it wasn't for the believers. <laughs> Every word that Jesus spoke was for us. Yes. Okay? Because it was saying the stay for our new life in the kingdom. Come on. So those were what for us. Yes. And you know those people, many people follow those. They have books and people buy those books, making them millionaires. And they lie to them. Saying that this word is not for us. That's what they say. This, that this word is not for the believers. They say that. As we keep this world, we have the presence of God all the time. Yes. Because we become His dwelling place. Amen? Amen. Remember, that we become the dwelling place of God when we born again, but they continue Manifestation of that person is keeping his word. Yes. Because it's there, but, but the manifestation of God, his power, his glory, happen when we keep his word. Agree, Amen. We're still in John 14, verse 24. Hallelujah. Who does not love me, does not keep my words. You heard that? And Jesus speaking. He said, you don't love me, you don't keep my word. Why Jesus saying, why are you saying that you love me, you're not keeping my word? Remember what he said? Why you call me Lord, Lord, you don't, you don't do whatever I told you to do. He's saying here, yeah, right? You don't keep my word. You don't love me. Don't say that you love me and I keep you my word. Hallelujah. And Jesus speaking. Who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. You see, every word that Jesus spoke came from the Father. Amen. Okay. And Jesus, 
Say, I only do what I see the Father do, and I speak what the Father, what I, what I hear from the Father. You see? This is what speaking, whatever you want to do, everything came from the Father. He wants us to do the same. Amen. Let's see his word, keep it, and do it, and speak it. His word. Think about that. I was talking earlier with my wife about discipline. Discipline, that's why I call it discipline, because it's something that you are made to do, because the right thing to do, <laughs> all right? And you become so disciplined that you always do the right thing all the time, no matter what. That the people that are disciplined in the eating. They eat certain things, they don't think that they think that could hurt them. If that thing is not so healthy for them, they, they torture because maybe that tastes good. They, they, they eat a small amount of that because they don't want to hurt them. So they're disciplined. And no one, and nothing, made them break that. The same thing we have to do with the Word of God and with the things of God. Because so disciplined. Be, and only disciplined because we love Him. Come we on. give His Word yes. and we do it where we don't allow anything and nobody to break that. Amen. You see? You know, when I used to be a runner, I used to run every day. It doesn't matter like sun, a chant, or rain. And it doesn't matter, it was cold. I did run every day. My wife said, oh, where you going? I want, I want to run, I can I stop. I did that for many years. Nothing made me stop. That's right. That's what's the matter? I'm going to run. That's called, I'm going to run. The biblical Christian loved Jesus' words and lives them. The biblical Christian. And you and you jump to chapter 15, John chapter 15, gonna continue speaking about keep keep. Amen. But the biblical Christian is the doer of the world. Amen. Doer of the world. The Holy Spirit is being speaking to about individual respond to that, to his word, in the individual fellowship with the, with the Lord, personal fellowship with the Lord. Remember? As you and God, and nobody can get between. You're not allowed nobody get between your relationship with God. Amen. Nobody. In anything, <laughs> nothing. And the Lord is speaking to all person, right? Amen. If you love me, you see, person, if you love me, keep my word. Because he said, he was talking singular. If someone loves me, keeps, keeps my word. And you will.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Some people say, I want to hear God's voice. Hey, his words is his voice. Keep it. Embrace it. speak to people and they say they have visions of the Lord and then they're not sure if they were from the Lord. That's why we have to go to the Word of God because the Word of God is sure. Amen. It's established. You can ask, oh, I don't know is that the Word of God. This is the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. Amen. And it's established in heaven. Before we, we saw <laughs> here in the pages of the Bible it was established in heaven. Psalm 119 talk about that. James chapter 1. Say amen. When you there, say amen. I want to hear you still here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. James chapter 1, praise the Lord, we start in verse 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. We can say the residue of the whole man. <laughs> if they're still in us, they have to go. That's right. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. They are fully aside of filthiness and of a flood of wickedness and receive with meanness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. I mean, mean it, be humble and receive the word of God. Amen. Because why we have to be humble? Because sometimes the word of God is, is you're not you're not you're not expecting to hear what what you don't want to hear, and God's going to speak to you what He need you to hear. Amen. And He said that they is, is have the power to save you. So that means that they have the power. The word of God when we receive have the power of, the, of transformation in life. Amen. Because the word of God is a spirit and life. Come on. And more sharper than two edges so Hallelujah. Go dividing everything. Amen. You see? Divide bone, marrow, everything. It go inside your heart. That was programs and things and and entertain the church, don't, don't, don't transform and not help nobody. That's right. People feel good about it, but they're not going to transform no one. If you can have all your problems you want, and you find you want, but don't take away the word of God. Amen. Don't do not do that. How do you want to do disciples without the word of God? And you say, go and make disciples. And you make disciples to, for Jesus, it's with his word. Amen. When he said, go make this up, and I said, make this up for you, or with your gospel, with the gospel of Christ, you will make disciples. We teach the word of God to make disciples. Amen. Amen. Therefore, lay aside filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meanness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. I mean, the word of God has the power for transformation. Amen? The word of God. Amen? That's why we cannot take it away, the word of God, from the church. Amen. And from our life. 
verse 22, but be a doers of the word, you see? Be a doer. Keep it and do it. <laughs> Amen. That's why he said, repeat it, repeat it. Keep it. Keep it. He repeated many times. But be a doer of the word and not haters only, deceiving yourselves. When you just hear the word of God, hey, you feel it's not people. What a preaching ever. Hey, do it. Because now you're deceiving yourself. Yeah. You're deceiving yourself. Keep it. Do it. Be a doer of the word. The sad thing is someone deceiving himself or herself. <laughs> They all deceive you as another, another thing, but you deceiving yourself. That's, that's a sad picture. Papers 22, but the doers of the world and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. How someone that when they see the truth and they put it aside and say, no, yeah, and I know that the truth, but I'm not going to follow. <laughs> then they're seeing yourself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Verse 23, for anyone say, for if anyone is a hearer of the world and not a doer, is like a man of serving his natural face and a mirror. We all today we look in the mirror, we look at our face in the mirror, right? Amen. And we remember who we are, right? Yeah. <laughs> and a mirror. Verse 24. For he who said himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. I mean, he's talking about the Word of God. This is about the mirrors about the Word of God. Who we see in the world? Jesus. Then you, you go and, and you receive the word, you tell the word, you forget how Jesus looked like. Not supposed to be like that. Some people you know, don't be like that. Don't go and see yourself in the mirror and you forget who you are. Verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Hallelujah. You see, we have to receive the word, keep it, and do it. I want to be blessed. Keep the word of God and do it. Amen. You see. Hallelujah. The Bible shows Christian likeness. Okay. Christ likeness. I mean, Amen. the Bible shows Christ likeness. The Bible tells us how Jesus is. Okay. Did you see in the Bible and the New Testament? They don't they don't describe Jesus, you know, physical. No, it's a perfect huh? Yes. Because they don't want that picture of their mind. They want the picture of Christ, the nature of Christ. Yes. It's character. The New Testament, they, they don't describe Jesus physical.
just those pictures that we see right there, you know, don't believe that much of the picture. Okay? They, they, they paint most of the pictures they paint is a real pair of white, white. Imagine these are walking all the time in, in that sun, it wasn't time, they don't even paint this a time. Besides that, you know, they, they don't tell, you know, they don't depict here in the Bible Jesus in a physical way. They don't depict Jesus like they, those painters that we see. They don't depict Jesus in the way here. But we show that Jesus, his nature, his character, that would the, the Bible depict Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. And that's the way we, we have to see our Jesus and the Spirit. Who he is. His character, his nature. And where we learn that? In the Bible. Okay. And he's a repeated. How many times he's a repeated? Keep my word, keep it. You don't say anything, and you will. They don't say, go and imagine, and imagine me. No, you're not talking about no imagination. You're talking about keep my word. And there is established. Is that what the biblical Christian does? Go and see the word of God and receive the word of God. Amen. Yes. The Bible shows Christ alive so that we may mature our conduct and our life again His. You know, Jesus is our mature stick, nobody else. Amen. And then allow the Holy Spirit to help us to grow in the likeness of Christ. Amen. Amen. And become a biblical Christian. And, and the Bible already said that, that the Father made us in the image of His Son, of His love. That to grow in that image, we have to resist his word. Amen. Keep it. Yes. Do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You so know, everything that come to mind is that the group that I knew, a group of believers. They just live about the imagination. They all were imagination. We were in prayer. They say, go count that thing. There was nothing to do with the work. And everything they talk about imagination, you know, and heaven, and clouds, and nothing about the world. What did Jesus say? Keep my word. If you love me, keep my word. You want to be a biblical Christian and live that. Biblical Christian is a real Christian. Yes. <laughs> you keep the word of Jesus. It doesn't matter what other people say. Come on. Don't be deceived. Neither deceive yourself. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord.